this is Mari Lane from the Buying Space Channel. Today I'm reading from the Apocrypha, which is the Inner Testament, which is in the Catholic Bible. I'm, a, as a Protestant, struggling to read through and learn about the Inner Testament as additional doctrine, but not as gospel. And what I mean by that is I look at books of the Bible that are not in the official Old Testament, New Testament, as additional studies. And they are of the setting, of the, uh, the biblical setting, and they add different aspects and knowledge that you can have of, uh, you know, the, the Middle East and the areas that uh, the prophets and Jesus lived in and uh, the places that Paul went and, and basically the ancient biblical geography and people and I believe that it's worth studying uh, I think that someone should be very familiar with the Old Testament New Testament before they start off uh, reading additional books uh, when I was um, five years old I was, or six, I was saved, I was baptized at eight, and in the time that I was in the church to the age of 15, uh, I was very scholarly child, actually as a genealogist as a child too, and I re read uh, the Biblical Archaeological Review uh, from like age 12 to 15, and I actually read it after 15. And I helped found a, a mailbox Bible club, and I was a Sunday school teacher and a teen missionary, and I was uh, went to several summer camps, Christian summer camps, and I always crushed the, the Bible quizzes and, and uh, you know, was the uh, top person to remember Bible verses and all of that. At the age of 15, however, I became an atheist and remained one for 41 years, and yes, I'm giving away my age, and I converted back to Christianity, and I have uh, continued reading the Old Testament, New Testament, and I have realized how much I've forgotten, but even in the years that I was an atheist, I would read passages of the Bible to debate theology, and I enjoyed theology, and I still enjoyed archaeology during those years. So the um, when I read from Tobit here in the Apocrypha, uh, some of the words will be very familiar with me and some will be new. And I quite honestly am struggling with it, but you'll see a Protestant <clears throat> struggle through the Catholic Bible here. <laughs> and um, you know, maybe if you're Protestant and are interested in learning about the Intertestament, we can uh, go through that struggle together. <clears throat> but the life of Tobit, or Tobit, is, uh, I'm finding interesting on its own. So, we're going to start in Chapter 2, A Family Celebration. When I returned home, I was reunited with my wife, Anne, and my sons, Tobias, my son, Tobias, at the Harvest Festival, which also is known as the Festival of Weeks, I sat down to a delicious meal. When I saw how much food there was on the table, I told Tobias, son, go out and find some fellow Jew who is living in poverty here in exile someone who takes God's commandments seriously, bring him back with you so that he can share this festival meal with us. Don't start eating until you come back. So Tobias went out to look for such a person, but he quickly returned shouting, Father, Father! Yes, what is it? I asked. One of our people has just been murdered. Someone strangled him and threw his body into the marketplace. I jumped up and left the table without even touching my food. I removed the body from the street and carried it 
into a little shed where I left it until sunset when I could bury it. When I returned home and washed so to purify myself in deep sorrow, I ate my dinner. I was reminded of what the prophet Amos had said unto the people of Bethel. Your festivals will be turned into funerals, and your glad songs will become cries of grief. I began to weep. After sunset, I went out, dug a grave, and buried the man. My neighbors thought I was crazy. Haven't you learned anything, they asked. Have? You have already been haunted, hunted down once for burying the dead, and you would have been killed if you had not run away. But here you are doing the same thing all over again. That night, I washed so as to purify myself, and I went out to my country yard to sleep by the wall. It was a hot night, and I did not pull over the covers over my head. Sparrows were on the wall right above me, but did not know it. Their warm droppings fell into my eyes, causing a white film to form on them. I went to the doctor after another, but the more they treated me with their medicines, the worse my eyes became, until finally I was completely blind. For four years, I could see nothing. My relatives were deeply concerned about my condition, and Akar supported me for two years before he went to the land of Elam. After Akakar left, my wife Anna had to go to work, so she took up weaving, like many other women. The people she worked for could pay her when she delivered cloth. One spring day, she cut a finished piece of cloth from the loom and took it to the people who had ordered it. They paid her full price and also gave her a goat. When Anna came home with the goat, she began to bleat. I called out, where did the goat come from? <laughs> you stole it, didn't you? Take it straight back to the owners. It's not right to eat stolen food. No, she replied. It was given to me as a gift in addition to what I got for the cloth. But I didn't believe her. I blushed her for shame for what she had done. I ordered her to return the goat to its owners, but she had the last word. Now I see what you are really like, she shouted. Where is all this concern of yours for others? What about those good deeds you used to do? So Talbot's having an interesting life with his wife and the mysterious goat. Um, sometimes that's so true. We take people in our own life for granted and assume the worst about them. And uh, we're kinder to strangers than we are our own. And um, I've been guilty of this. I try very hard not to take people for granted that are in my life. Um, and... Um, Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I'm like, where'd that goat come from? <laughs> so you have to believe in the people around you and, and believe in yourself. And um, I'm really enjoying reading the Apocrypha and the life of Tobit, if that is truly how you pronounce his name. <laughs>